What it do? What's up? Your girl G here. Welcome back to my channel. Appreciate you for tuning in. We are gonna get into the love and the love and the love and the love of Marriage Huntsville, y'all. Uh, love and Marriage Huntsville have turned literally into love and hip hop. Uh, love and hip hop Huntsville. I can't even talk today for some reason. But as y'all can, as we watch, clearly what I'm saying is it's going down uh, on these country roads. Okay, although Huntsville is developing. You know, they out here, you know, backyard brawling, point blank, period. So we're going to get to this episode, discuss everything. Y'all apologize that this, that this review is coming a little bit late. Uh, we've been having some just storms uh, down here in Texas, some rainy days. So um, not only is the Wi-Fi going out, but the light, because I record over here by my window, the light just ain't popping, you know, for me to get recorded a good video. And I really didn't want to do an audio one. Because I don't really enjoy doing audio reviews that much. So, nonetheless, we are here to talk about Love and Huntsville. I apologize, you know, as well that you grow it. I'm kind of looking crazy because, you know, I tried to do my curls like I did the last time. And the weather said, <laughs> psych, <laughs> you thought. <laughs> so, the curls then turned into waves, all right? So, y'all just, if y'all talking about, little why her hair look like that, mind your motherfucking business, okay? It's, we struggling down here in Texas right now. And it's going to be 28 degrees tonight, all right? So, nonetheless, let's get ahead and get into the episode, all right? So, we pick up where we left off. Um, Marceau basically said, okay, you want to take a shot at teacher? I'm taking a shot right back. Uh, call the police and drug Chester. I bet she high right now. So, Amin heard that and said, a word? A word? We want to talk about mothers. That's all I think of this. We want to talk about mothers. So, Amin, he said, all right. He coming around. He tried to scoop, scoop, and so Marceau was like, well, shit, I'm a ski, ski. Like, every time a me came, like, Marceau came right around the other way. He was not trying to get into it. So, of course, everybody's breaking it up. Kiki going off. Do it, bitch. Do it, bitch. You know, um, I'm not the one you need to worry about. It's his, his, his. You know, you want to talk about me, you being mad at me, but you need to check your husband. Da, 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 da. So, uh, Kimmy, Stormy, Melody. They go off and pull Kiki and I mean to the side. Uh, Tisha goes inside. Um, I don't know. Tisha goes outside with Kimmy and then Stormy and Melody go over there to check on um, Kiki. So Kiki over there just, you know, of course, like straight back and forth, just annoyed, bothered. And Melody's like, girl, okay, hold on, girl. Take a deep breath. Y'all know her, her little light country self. All right now, Kiki. Okay. Now let's talk about this situation. Did they do anything? Did they, you know, did they, were they disrespectful? And she's like, no. Nah. She was like, well, did they say anything or uh, physically touch you? And she's like, no. Nah. And so she's like, well, girl, why'd you throw the drink? And Kiki was like, I, she's like, I just reacted. And the reason Kiki kept getting more upset is because they kept ignoring her. When somebody's looking for a reaction and you starve them from the feedback, it pisses them off even more. So because Kiki was trying to get that, you know, that tennis match going and Tisha and Marceau kept looking at the ball like, I'm not like watching it bounce on pass, like, bitch, I'm not sparring with you. Kiki got even more irate. And so then that's when it, you know, escalated to get mad, get glass, scratch your ass. Um, and then that's when she, you know, trashed Tisha with the drink. Um, and so basically at this front, at this point, Stormy and Melody are like, girl, Kiki, like, okay, you know, you know, that was wrong. And Kiki was like, yeah, you know, I, I, I just, you know, was so upset and I just reacted and, you know, I do know that part was wrong, but you know, I still feel the way I feel, you know? And so Melody's like, well, what? what happened like what something had to have happened this ain't making no sense and so kiki basically brought up how she was talking about what they talked about at you know the lunch or whatever that mel and kiki had already talked about which was allegedly marceau messing with some other girl and all that yada yada so at the same time tisha's on the inside you know getting cleaned up and, you know, Marceau's talking to her about, like, yeah, you know, she was trying to get a reaction out of you. And nobody's believing her lies. And Kimmy's like, I'm just confused. Like, did y'all know? Did y'all know y'all was in a bad place? Like, what is happening? And so Tisha basically fills her in. And so does Marceau. He was like, we knew this was going to happen. She thought, like, she had something on me. But 
the person, because Tisha was like, she called me and was like, oh, you know, I got to tell you something. You know, it's, it's some information. I want to talk to you in person. And Tisha's kind of like, just tell me on the phone. Like, so why, why won't you tell me on the phone? And she was saying that Kiki was persistent about telling her in person. Now, here's the thing. Because Kiki is messy, y'all, and is trying to start some sh over there in the Scott household, if she was persistent, super persistent about Tisha coming over to talk in person, y'all, I ain't gonna lie, I wouldn't put it past Kiki to have that bitch there or the man there that was trying to, you know, reach out to Tisha. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I would not put it past her. Not only that, Kiki definitely has been trying to get her footing on Love and Marriage Huntsville. She want that paycheck, all right? She want to be on the show. This is how she was introduced on the show through Starwood, Tisha, and Marceau. And so she feels like she has to continue that in order to stay on. And Kiki, you really don't. Like, you really don't, especially with the fact that you and Tisha had made up. So this is why, girl, you in the wrong because you already said, like, all right, that's it. I'm not talking about your marriage no more. So Marcel was like, man, what do you do about this? She trying to come and, you know, attack us, but it's not going to work, you know. And so Kiki and Amin, you know, they sit out there talking with Melanie and was like, man, this been going on. And, you know, it means like, I, I put hands on Marcel if I need to. And they basically head out. Like at the end of the day, they're like, this is something that's been going on for forever. And Amin has been telling Kiki, like, you need to drop it. And I guess Marcel been telling Tisha, you need to drop it. But the fact that they did grow up very close to each other, you know, I think they do think about that. But the problem is they are, they were in an environment where they clearly tried to like one up each other all the time. Then not only that, Tisha was raised by Wanda. And Wanda is a person who views all women as competition as we've, we've just seen the way Wanda talks about you know, women and Tisha in regards to obviously in the past, like with Melly and things like that. She was raised, Tisha was raised by a woman where it was like, you automatically pit yourself against another woman. And so I feel like that's what happened with Kiki maybe a lot of the times. And so Tisha getting this show and things like that, you know, I think maybe Kiki, you know, is trying to like, you know, catch up to her or whatever. But you going about it the wrong way, Kiki. Like you really are because this, it's crazy. So they leave. Tisha and Marceau come back outside. They all trying to sit down, chill, cool down, whatever. Melody goes to check on Marceau. Marceau, you good? la di da Martel, let me get into your ass real quick because you trying to throw some slick shade to my all man. See, this, see, see the women because they was going back and forth. And the, when the fight happened, was like, man, you know, women always in drama. Y'all always in some mess because y'all always throwing shade and, got, shade and gossip. And see, men, we just chill. You know, we don't be doing all that. I'm glad Love and Marriage Huntsville did that flashback. Like, you don't remember that y'all was just fighting? Like, do you re not remember that y'all literally was just throwing hands? You want to talk about all oh, women be full of drama? Bro, this season, you would just be with Marceau at the crib. So I can't stand him when he when he do stuff like that. But nonetheless, um, yeah, Marceau was talking to, uh, to to Melody, and she was just like, "Yo, what is going on?" And he was like, "That like this is it. Like this is what Kiki does. Like by this time, everybody's coming to sit down at the table, and Marceau and Tisha are having at it. In particular, Marceau and y'all. Now, no, I don't mess with Marceau like that. But in this moment." Can we really fault him? Can we really be mad at him when he's throwing slugs like go get her drug tested and making jokes about her being, you know, on the on that stuff? Because at the end of the day, like Marcel broke it down. Like we've been backstabbed by her time and time and time and time after again. They've known each other for a long time. And you keep going for their marriage, like you're throwing low blows, you know, Kiki. So if you go low, they have the right to take it to hell, like truth be told. And it's not to be like, oh, like it's wrong or like she deserved it or whatever. But it's just like, you can't be starting fights. And if you throw a rock, be mad that somebody throw back a boulder, you know? Because that's something that we see it happen on reality TV all the time. Somebody throw a rock and then when somebody throw the whole Roman Coliseum back, now all of a sudden it's like, ah, oh, you wrong, you wrong. 
well, but you should have started in the first place, you know? So, uh, as Marceau was digging into Kiki, I guess Courtney, that's uh, either Stormy's cousin, I'm guessing. Um, it's like, man, Marceau, cut it out. Okay? And Marceau was like, no, I don't want to hear it. Like, no. Like, Kiki, it's always, everybody should believe Kiki. The police is lying. Crime Stoppers is lying. You know, uh, the internet lying. Everybody lying, but we supposed to believe Kiki, you know? And so she's like, well, if you think that somebody's on drugs, like, does that mean, you know, like, you should be like, okay, this person isn't in their right mind and, you know, be considerate of that. Um, he was like, well, I know it's the stuff because I've been around her for 18 years. Like, she wouldn't have done this any other way if she wasn't on that stuff right now. Y'all talk about, oh, it's just because she was upset. No, it's because she was on that stuff. She was high. And so now Stormy at this moment was like, you know, oh, I don't really like that. Uh, immediately they're trying to put it that Kiki, in her confessional meeting that Kiki's on, you know, relapsed or whatever. I just don't think that's fair. You know, sometimes people can have a overreaction. But yes, that very much is true. You know, Stormy, it could be that she had an overreaction. But when you have a history that Kiki does, you can't be surprised when the first thing that people also think as well is, is she bet, you know, on that stuff. <laughs> so, um, so Marceau, you know, he was talking about it, egging it on and was like, no, like, uh, I'm not doing it. Stormy trying to, he's like, Stormy, stop it. Like, cut it out. Um, he's like, and then Marceau, he made a good ass point with this too. He was like, I want to sit here talk about, oh, Kiki on dress. He was like, help raise your hand if, uh, how many raise your hands if you've been out there to pick Kiki up at two o'clock in the morning? And he raised his hand. He was like, how about two times? How about sitting there talking to her for four to five hours, you know, trying to, you know, talk to her and, her and get her out of this stuff. He's like, me and Tisha were there for her when nobody else was messing with her, not even her husband, her mama, nobody. But yet we get the brunt of her, you know, addiction, if that's what it is. And he's like, we don't even get the experience. To go. We don't even get the experience to hit. We don't get no euphoria out of this. But we got to deal with, you know, the the dark side of somebody being, you know, on that stuff. Y'all, he made a very valid point. If somebody's constantly beating you up, and as much as it sucks, you do have to allow yourself the validity to have the validity to have your feelings. Because I know what it feels like to be on the opposite end or the the end of the receiving end of somebody being you know mentally unwell like whether it be mental health issues drug issues or whatever um you know you try to give this person grace because they are dealing with something but it still don't take away from the fact that you are dealing with the brunt of their issues and that's not fair um and so yeah Marceau like Although he's taking cheap shots, he was like, yeah, you know, if, if I had done it again, I would have said it. But at this point, like, what else do you want from me? Like, what else do you want from me? For real, for real. Um, so Stormy starts piping up or whatever. And so she was like, oh, so just like, uh, um, uh, she was like, oh, so that's just kind of like when, you know, when if Courtney were to step up and when I call you, um, called you a bitch or whatever oh no no i know how it started so it started with them basically talking about how mean should have came forward and told her she was acting belligerent acting out of line and so was like also oh, like how you thought like courtney maybe should pop through whatever and then they get into obviously the whole situation with stormy calling Marceau, you know a biz naive and whatnot and stormy girl like stormy girl let's stop playing let's stop playing girl because truth be told we all know in any shape or form, when a woman calls a man a B, it is to chop him off at the knees, so to speak. Um, and it doesn't negate the fact that men and women should be able to have, you know, conversations, disagreements, whatever. But when you start getting to extent, like Mar Marie said, when a woman calls a man, she's trying to trick, she's trying to piss him off. She's trying to get at him. She's trying to, you know, verbally assault him. And so if he were to call her one back or if he were to get hype, then guess who has to deal with it? You know, Courtney, which kind of low key is what Stormy wants. Stormy wanted Courtney to beat that ass. She knows Courtney would fight on her behalf. And so Marcel was like, you know, if Tisha were to do the same thing, 
having a conversation with a man and she called him a bitch like now you writing checks your ass can't like i got a cash because at the end of the day i'm your husband and you fighting with a man and we not gonna let that go down so he was like you know obviously the same goes for you stormy um and so stormy tried to come up with some excuse and it was like, well, you agree with me? Like, you called yourself a big bitch. And he was like, yeah, yeah. And Kimmy was like, girl, uh, shout to Erica Nero. Girl, stop it. Like, y'all yeah, shout to Erica De Niro. Like, girl, stop playing. Because had it been Rosenberg, somebody called Stormy a bitch. Uh, I mean, called Courtney one. You wouldn't like it. Like, you and Tisha called, you wouldn't like it. So stop it, Stormy. Um, so... Basically, they agreed to, like, call a truce on the bitch, you know. She's like, oh, you know, that he's like, oh, yeah, where you doing this comment? She's like, well, you know, it is, it is. And Martel, you know, he tried to pipe up, like, oh, you know, why should not defend her husband if another woman's calling her a bitch? And, you know, had you called me once, should I'm going to call you one back? And that is true. Once men, once a man and woman start trading, you know, bitches the hoes back and forth, it can get a little dangerous. It can get a little shaky. And that's typically when a man got to step in on the woman's behalf and get to, you know, squaring up. And we don't want that, you know. And so finally they call a truce. And Stormy on her confessional still was like, you know, I still don't think I was wrong for calling Marcel a bitch because, you know, he still be acting, you know, real sassy at times. I was like, oh, Lord. So it's like she agreed to, like, not say it in public, but behind closed doors, Marcel to Stormy, you still going to be a bitch. <laughs> So, um, Melody gets up and leaves, um, um, what happened? No, 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 Stormy, oh, I know what also was what happened. Um, Stormy ended up crying because she tried to stand up for Kiki and was like, well, you know, ha you know, we are saying this, all these rumors and stuff like that because the other cousin was like, y'all don't know what she's going through and things like that. And teacher was like, girl, you know. Because you, you've tried to ask me to, like, be there for her. And at the end of the day, like, we keep getting bit in the ass. So if somebody shows you who they are, like, believe them. And, like, y'all, we got to give them that. For real, for real, we do. Um, and so, Stormy's like, well, can we say that with accuracy? And Marcel was like, cut it out. Like, have you ever seen anybody do drugs? And she was like, actually, yeah, I have. My best friend. And she was watching my son. I was trying to help her. And she got emotional. And so, Marcel... Like, he kind of was like, damn, you know, and so she walked away and he went over there hugging and was like, you know, I should have been more sensitive. But also he didn't know, but, he, you know, he had a valid question to ask. And so she just was triggered and, you know, he went over there to console her. Um, at that point, like I said, Millie leaves. Um, oh, Kimmy gets her Jeep. Maurice does what every nigga does when they get their ass in trouble. They use money <laughs> to purchase a gift to try to get their ass at the doghouse. Maurice know he been messing up with this whole sex capade and using his wife as a human fleshlight and telling the world that he admires her for rolling over and suffering through it, you know, to fulfill her wifely duties, you know. Um, and so Maurice, because he had convinced himself that although Kimmy kept saying for the umpteen time she wanted a Jeep, you wanted to get her a Lamborghini, Maybach, Range Rover, everything, but... But now you know you in the thick of it with your mess. And so he said, well, let me get her this Jeep so I can, you know, try to put a Band-Aid on this bullet bullet wound that I got because I can't keep my mouth shut and telling the public that basically my wife with cancer, you know, ain't doing what it needs to be doing in the bedroom. I, Marcy, do you really think about that shit? Like, for real, for real? Your wife is dealing with cancer, recovering, radiation, chemo, poisons the two in her body medications and you feel like it's a mental thing and i even with that like if it's a mental thing what are you doing to help her mental health so she can get the coochie you know wet for you are you doing anything to help i doubt it because if she's come home the laundry still gotta wash and put up dishes and your son and his, you know, lazy ass because he's learning it from you not to mow the grass and shit. No wonder she don't want to hop up to do a full split. Like, come on, Maurice. But, you know, he gonna distract her with his Jeep for with his Jeep for a little bit. She ran off and took a took a ride and, you know, came back. But nonetheless, let's move on. Um, the boys, they at the um uh, the guys, they at the gym. Martel trying to help Courtney lose weight. He wanna get down. 
Uh, Chris show up looking real slick. You know, his workout clothes. He said, pretty boy Chris. Uh, he looked nice, though. Chris, for an older guy, like, is nicely in shape. So they work out. And then, of course, um, they just get to talking. And they bring up, obviously, the, the, the barbecue. And uh, Martell asked, you know, what Stormy told Courtney. And he was like, man, you know, I heard, like, he, I guess, threw a drink on Tisha. You know, was it that bad? And both Chris and Martell was like, nigga, was that bad? Like, she was like, she got out the pool. <laughs> And so he was like, man, you know, what Marceau do? He's like, man, he almost fought on me. You know, Marceau, was out, and Courtney was like, oh, real? He's like, well, you know, sometimes Marceau, you know, how he is. And he was like, you know, I don't like how he just be going at my wife and you trying to call her Mrs. Steele, Mrs. Steele. You know, he definitely was trying to take a jab. You know, we all know that Marceau is, he's good for those little, little pokes. Um, nonetheless, um, they move on to talking about um, um, Courtney and Chris possibly being cousins because they from a small town. Chris asked what Martell is up to. No, Martell, what you up to now? And he was like, you know, you already know. He's like, oh, really? You got a, you got a, a place to stay? You found one yet? And every single time Martell got the answer, yes, but your ass still ain't moved out. He loved it. He's like, well, you know, I still got like 20 days. Martell, know the you don't. Why are you squatting in this man's house? Get your ass out, bruh. You a whole ass squatter. He's like, man, you trying to put me in Martell and Melody house. He, I, mean, I don't care where you got to go. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get the fuck up out of here is where Chris is at right now. Oh, Martell, I swear to God. I swear to God. Niggas like you make my ass itch, bro. Y'all do not take responsibility for y'all shit and where y'all are at in life. And then y'all just want to blame everybody for y'all bullshit. Like, it's so annoying. But, Chris, you're taking advantage of his friendship. And Chris now done lost out on money because you refused to get your ass out the house. Go back to your mama crib and start over. Point blank, period. Um, nonetheless, uh, Courtney, Chris, they're going to try to do a DNA test for fun. Um, oh, y'all, Tiffany did show up. Y'all see Tiffany throw her little shade in. She was like, oh, it had to be something serious for Marceau to defend Tisha. Because, you know, psh, that really happens. I said, oh, uh, Tiffany might be pregnant. But y'all know she's still going <laughs> y'all know she's still gonna throw a little, little, little jab in there, too. Um, what else happened? Did anything else happen at the gym? Mm, what else did they talk about? Marceau, Courtney calling a B. Um... Oh, possibly Marceau and Courtney meeting up and talking. He like, I ain't going to black though. We're going to meet on neutral ground. Um, and then, oh, when he got the DNA test, this was funny too. Uh, Martell was like, oh, you know, we ain't got, uh, he was like, oh, you want to talk about DNA test or whatever. You know, we got blood. And Chris looked at him like, no, we don't. <laughs> Chris said, not your blood. Like the way he... The way he said it, he was like, "Nigga, you try to group me in with you, ain't no way I'm related to your ass. Mm -mm. Not on duty, not on duty. Chris said, nigga, don't you try it. I am not related to you in no way with your old busted ass, broke, can't get a job, can't stick with nothing, cheating on your wife, got a baby on the side, you know, messing over your mama and ex ass. Like, mm -mm. don't you try to put me in with your bloodline. So last but not least, Kiki, they at the storage room. They move in. I mean, niggas like you upset me because, like she said, I get your son is an exceptional athlete, but you got two other kids. Like, bro, come on. But he sees his son probably as somebody that's going to get them out the hood, you know. So Melody pulls up on him. Pull up on me. Okay, Melody pulls up on him to check on him. And, you know, Kiki says she apologized for throwing a drink, but they are where they are, and it is what it is. Um, Amin was like, you know, Marceau, he tried me. I'm cool with Maurice, but you know, he, he been wanting to say that shit and he did. And he has been, he been waiting to throw that shit back in, in Kiki face. Drug test her ass. He, he been waiting to say that for sure, for sure. Amin was on the song with that. So Melly was like, you know, I just want to check on you, girl. I even checked on Tisha. You know, me and her don't talk. Um, you know, me and her don't talk, but you know, I checked in on her, girl. Like, y'all feel like there's nowhere for y'all to go? And Kiki's like, no, like it is what it is. Um, so Melody basically was like, you know, when you did leave, they did, you know, kind of joke about you and stuff like that. And she's like, that don't surprise me like at all. Cause we all know they joked about her before. 
Um, and she was like, I, you know, that don't surprise me. Like, that's the type of people that they are. And so she's like, girl, I ain't with it. You know, I feel like, you know what? If they want to talk about you not being clean, I, we can prove them wrong. Well, I brought a test and we can do it today. Kiki, I ain't going to lie, y'all. She kind of had, looked like her body kind of had like a little quick heart palpitation. Like, you said what? <laughs> and I ain't saying that Kiki ain't clean, y'all. But what I'm saying is we just cannot be 100% sure. But Kiki basically was like, a word? I ain't gonna do no test until Marceau take a lie detector. <laughs> oh, Marceau ain't never take no motherfucking lie detector test. And like Melody said, like, we all know these rumors have been happening with Tisha, but you know, she gonna believe what her. First of all, Melody's um blue confessional with the hair swoop, with the bang, with the, the waves. Oh my god, one of my favorite looks from Melody. But like Melody said, Tisha gonna believe her husband. That's her right to do it, but don't be mad when other people don't believe the stories. You know, we all know Marceau done got community dick. He been hanging out there with Martel and Maurice. We all know they out there was doing dirt together. But at the end of the day, Tisha gonna say, well, her man, her man, her man, her man. Even though bitch, your man let you for dead, ho. But like, you know, she gonna stay with my man, my man, because she believes in that, you know, oh, we're gonna be married for 30 years, no matter what your husband do type shit. Um, and so it's no point in trying to fight that. Like, when Tisha had enough bitch she'll leave and we just let Tisha be dumb in peace if she gonna turn the blind eye let her do it um I know okay then if it come out we do get some facts like do we really believe Tisha gonna leave hell nah so leave it um so yeah and that's where the episode ended so y'all tell me what you think y'all think Kiki back on that stuff on them drugs um what do you guys think about uh Stormy and the whole call her so a bitch situation Y'all think that she trying to play dumb like she don't know it's bad to call a man biz naive. Um, and uh, what else do I want to think about? Um, do you guys feel like uh, Marceau was in the wrong for taking that jab at Kiki? You know, calling her out about the drugs. Like, do they finally have a right to basically take jabs back at Kiki after what she's been doing? So, yeah, y'all jump down in the comments. Let me know. I appreciate you for tuning in. I'll catch you guys later.